The first step in replacing the window regulator is to disconnect the battery. Remove the small plastic plate at the bottom of the rear passenger seat. Underneath is a 12 millimeter nut holding the negative terminal from the battery to ground. Remove the nut and pull the cable off, making sure it can't accidentally make contact to the post while you are working. Remove the screw holding the door latch cover in place, green arrow. Once removed, take the cover off. Pry the surround piece around the door handle off. It just pops out. Underneath is a large Phillips head screw. Remove the screw and set it aside. Pry out the SRS airbag cover trim piece, green arrow. Below is a Phillips head screw. Remove the screw and set it aside as well. Also unscrew the door latch lock button, purple arrow. Remove the trim plug underneath the door pull. Beneath is a Phillips head screw as well. Remove the screw. Pry out the light switch along the bottom edge of the door panel. Disconnect the wires going to the light. You now need to take a large flathead screwdriver and pry the door panel off along the front bottom and back edges of the green arrows. There are a series of plastic clips holding it in. If you have a trim removal tool, it is much better than using a screwdriver. If you work your way around the edges, you'll be able to remove the panel without breaking any of the clips. If some do get broken, it's not a big deal as they are not expensive to replace. Pelican Parts sells them and you can get them by following the link at the end of this video. There are nine of the clips around the perimeter of the front door panel. Once you have popped the edges of the door panel free, lift the door panel up to release it from the top edge of the door near the window. Once removed, look inside. You'll see a metal hook connecting the door handle to the release latch. Lift the hook out, green arrow. Now look at the back side of the seat adjustment switch. You'll see the electrical harness going to the switch, green arrow. Pull the harness out of the switch. Also pull the harness going to the lower door light out of the door panel. Use some painter tape around the window as shown here. This will hold the window up in place once you remove the regulator from the guide rail at the bottom of the window. With the door panel removed, you'll see the plastic moisture barrier around the panel. You'll want to carefully peel this off the inside of the door, starting at the rear edge of the door as indicated by the green arrow. The idea is to peel it off in just a way so that it can be glued back onto the door later. Just let the plastic drape over the speaker at the front of the door. Locate and remove the electrical connection going to the window motor. Loosen the torque adjustment bolt at the top of the door as indicated by the green arrow. You can access the bolt to the small hole seen here. Locate the rivets that hold the window regulator in place. There are six rivets that hold the regulator in place on each front door as indicated by the green arrows. Also take note of the locating tab, yellow arrow. This tab locates the overall position of the regulator inside the door. You'll now want to drill out the rivets holding the regulator in place. This is a bit tricky, but you only want to drill until the head of the rivet pops off. Once all the rivets have been drilled out, Maneuver the locating tab out of the notch on the door and rotate the regulator until you can access the three torque screws that hold the window motor to the regulator. Inside the door panel, you'll need to slide the metal and plastic mounting guides of the regulator out of the lower window channel. This is one of those things that can be a bit difficult to do. Just reach up inside the door and push the guides towards the front of the door. Once they are free of the window channel, lower the regulator down enough to access the three torque screws that hold the motor to the regulator, green arrows. Once free, pull the motor off the back of the regulator. Now remove the regulator from inside the door. This picture shows the top arms of the new regulator. You'll want to keep the arms in this relative position. 
Loosen the hex bolt on the right arm slightly, green arrow, so that you can slide the back piece into the bottom window rail inside the door. Now fit the new window regulator up inside the door. You'll want to slide the guides on the ends of the upper arms into the channel on the underside of the door. Rotate the arms of the regulator so that the two upper guide rails slide onto the bottom of the window rail. Make sure that you get the orientation of the metal guide correct. Leave the hex bolt of the guide loose at this point. Now, reinstall the motor on the back of the regulator using the three torque bolts. Once the motor is secured, rotate the regulator until you can locate the mounting tab into the slot on the door as indicated by the green arrow. You may find that having a helper lower the window glass makes this easier. The regulator must now be riveted in place. Place the rivets through the holes in the door and also the regulator on the other side of the holes, green arrows. It helps if you have a helper hold the regulator to the back side of the door while you fit the rivets. I found that the factory Mercedes rivets are incredibly difficult to use without a heavy duty rivet gun. I actually broke the handle of our rivet gun trying to get one of them to seat on the door. I ended up using rivets from Home Depot instead. Once the front part of the regulator has been riveted to the panel, rotate the rear arm so that the holes line up with the holes in the door and rivet it in place. Now reconnect the electrical plug going to the motor and glue the moisture barrier back onto the door frame. I use silicon adhesive that dries clear to do the job. At this point, you can reconnect the battery to test the function of the new regulator. Press the window up as far as it will go, then hold the switch for 5 seconds. This will calibrate the new regulator. Once calibrated, tighten the hex bolt through the small opening in the door, green arrow. Now refit the door panel. One thing you may encounter when putting the door panel back on is a mounting piece that is broken free of the glue holding it to the door panel. If so, just clean the back side of the mounting piece and then glue and clamp it back to the panel. Once dried, you can install the new tabs in the mount and refit the door panel. Whenever you disconnect the seat adjustment switch, the motors in the seat will lose calibration and the switch may even work backwards. What you'll need to do is look under the front of the seat and disconnect the connector going to the seat motors. Once you plug it back in, push the switch as far forward as it will go and hold it there for 5 seconds. This will recalibrate the switch. The first step in removing the rear window regulator is to tape the window up around the door frame as shown here. This is to keep the window from falling inside the door while you remove the regulator. Make sure that the battery is still disconnected or if it hasn't been, disconnect it now by following the steps at the beginning of this video. To remove the rear door panel, begin by removing the screw holding the door latch cover in place, as indicated by the green arrow. Once removed, take the cover off. Pry out the surround piece around the door handle, green arrow, underneath is a large Phillips head screw. Remove the screw and set it aside. Remove the trim plug underneath the door pull. Beneath is a Phillips head screw as well. Remove that screw. Pry out the light switch along the bottom edge of the door panel. Disconnect the wires going to the light. Take your trim removal tool and pry the door panel off along the front, bottom, and back edges. There are a series of plastic clips holding it in. If you work your way around the edges, you'll be able to remove the panel without breaking any of the clips. If some do get broken, it's not a big deal as they are not expensive to replace. Pelican sells them and you can find them by following the link at the end of this video. Once you have popped the edges of the door panel free, lift the door panel up to release it from the top edge of the door near the window. Once removed, look inside. You'll see the metal hook connecting the door handle to the release latch. Lift the hook out and also disconnect the electrical connection to the window switch. With the door panel removed, you'll see the plastic moisture barrier on the door panel. 
You'll want to carefully peel this off the inside of the door, starting at the rear edge of the door, green arrow. The idea is to peel it off in just a way so that it can be glued back onto the door later. Just let the plastic drape over the speaker at the front of the door. Now you'll want to drill out the rivets holding the regulator in place. Use the drill only until the heads of the rivets pop off. Disconnect the electrical connection going to the rear window motor. Inside the door panel, you'll need to remove the black plastic retaining clip that fits into the bottom edge of the window rail. This picture shows the window rolled down to show how the clip fits into the rail green arrow. Just pull the clip down, then slide the plastic guide out of the rail. At this point, you should be able to remove the regulator out of the door. This picture shows the bottom of the plastic clip with the window raised, green arrow. This picture shows the regulator guide with the plastic clip removed. Shown here are the two torque screws that hold the motor to the rear regulator. Remove the two screws and rotate the motor to release it from the regulator. This picture shows the splined shaft on the motor and the splined pulley inside the regulator. You'll want to position the top pulley of the new regulator the same as the old one shown here, yellow arrow. Simply pull down on the pulley until it stops at the top of the regulator. Fit the motor into the new regulator and rotate it into position. When in place, reinstall the two torque screws holding it down. Fit the new regulator assembly up inside the door. You'll want to first slide the plastic guide up into the bottom rail of the window and reinstall the plastic clip. Installation is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.